actual play Twitch channel where we play amazing tabletop RPGs together. You may be expecting Bad Jay to be talking, and if I'm sorry to disappoint you. Maybe you remember me from The One Ring, but uh, I, I played an asshole elf, so instead I'm going to be playing a, a GM, as you can see from the... Oh, got to remember, got to reverse the thing. Mad Jay was kind enough to let me step in and GM for a bit, and I'm immensely grateful for his trust, and I'm excited to run something for the channel. Uh, now, as a reminder, all channel proceeds for actual play are split between Black Lives Matter and the Trans Legal Defense and Education Fund. Uh, if you enjoy this, we will be doing this weekly on Thursday nights on this channel. So stay tuned. What is it that I'm talking about? Uh, well, let's go around the horn first. And because there's, I don't know, if you've watched actual play enough, you may recognize her, but she's new to this particular group that I'm in. Uh, so Misha, if you could introduce yourself. Hi, Misha B, uh, she, they, uh, I am a, uh, writer and editor and sensitivity editor for RPGs and tabletop games, uh, and some works. Uh, I'm one of the creators of Arun, uh, which is an Afrocentric, uh, space opera, uh, that just came out. You can go and buy that soon. Uh, well, actually go buy it now even, uh, and I'm one of the founding editors for uh, More Seats at the Table, which seeks to highlight games by gender marginalized uh, authors. And that's what I do. Thanks, Misha. Uh, Jeremiah, you might remember our, our lovable dwarf from the One Ring series. Jeremiah, you want to introduce yourself for us? Yeah, uh, I'm Jeremiah. He, him. Uh, I don't I do not do anything but, but play when it comes to RPGs. I'm not creating anything, so I don't have... I don't have anything exciting to promote except for this awesome game. Your clout is your amazing skill as a player. <laughs> that's why I'm excited to have you at my table. And then we know him, we love him. It's his slot that I, I've <clears throat> horked in on. Mad Jay, you introduce yourself, man. They fired me. They fired me. No, so I'm I'm excited to be playing. Uh, I played a little bit of Bonnie of the Week with you before, so I'm excited to play a little longer. And uh, I'm Matt Jay. Uh, you can find me all over the internet. And tonight, I am Player Mad Jay. So, Player Mad Jay, love it, yeah. love it. I love playing with Mad Jay. He is. I have run a lot of a lot of RPGs in my time, and Lady Blackbird is one based on my top five. <laughs> and I still say this to this day. I've I probably run Lady Blackbird all told maybe forty times, forty forty five times. And Mad Jay's Captain Cyrus Vance, and if you don't know what I mean when I say Captain Cyrus Vance, there's five pre-generated characters for Lady Blackbird, and Cyrus Vance is the captain. He's kind of the Han Solo type, and Mad Jay's still my favorite, my favorite Vance. You're such a good Vance. We played at Gen Con oh so long ago. That was, was so long ago, yes. It was amazing. That was a good game. Well, we are going to be giving a shot with that book of Boba Fett out, two episodes out as we play here we're going to play a little game that is a hack of an amazing tabletop role-playing game first let me show you the the merch uh this game is called monster of the week it is from evil hat michael sands wrote it it is a really cool tome for supernatural style uh monster hunting games in a in a modern setting and i love monster of the week it's a really solid game second edition was put out by evil hat and you can pick it up at a game store. Like it's in full on distribution. I normally play indie games where it's like, yeah, find it online if you can. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, but Monster of the Week, full on great RPG. You've probably heard of it if you've listened to any AP podcasts. Uh, I believe Brother and Brother and Me played it for a bit. So pretty solid. I've taken that as the chassis because I, I, I may have remember this from the brief bits on uh, the One Ring stream. I, I, I love Star Wars a lot. Like, this is my boss jacket, guys. And Star Wars is really fun for me. It's a wonderful setting and world. And it's not perfect, but it's pretty great. And I enjoy it. And I run a lot of different RPGs set in the Star Wars universe because it's fun. And it's great to have that connective tissue of being able to play lots of different systems, but having some characters overlap. And Bounty of the Week is a game that I have reskinned Monster of the Week into. And there's some 
few new rules and stuff that uh, I've added to, bolted on, some stuff I've renamed. We'll hit most of that as we play. But uh, Will from the Gauntlet community and I have done a lot of working back and forth. Like we'll play and then we'll have a conversation. We'll rename something and we'll tweak something. It's really, really fun. Uh, and David MK also from the Gauntlet has done is like a whole all other version of Bounty of the Week that takes a lot of the core concepts and bolted on some really cool impulse drive stuff. But you don't have to worry about that. We're playing basically Will and Mai's reskin of Monster of the Week. And that's what we'll be playing for a, a few weeks here. I'm very excited to give it a shot. And Jay, Matt, Jay, and I were talking about coming into this and we said it'd be cool to do a session zero. So uh, that's what we're going to do with you today. We are uh, have some choices that have been made because there's a large number of playbooks uh some choices have been made for like which playbooks everybody is interested in and uh and then we'll go through the actual uh i don't i say i say carajan chair Char i don't know I, I every time i say it i say it differently character generation there we'll just do the full thing uh let me see if i can switch our cool screen layout i think i need to screen share first so i'm going to screen share our awesome not us then we'll create like a when you put a portable hole into a a bag of holding or something and then bad things happen right i think that's why i gotta add it to the stream there we go bang all right this is the character keeper uh we use roll for the wondering and it was really fun i'm addicted to using google spreadsheets because i use spreadsheets in my real last job I'm not at all afraid of them. <laughs> no, that's not true for everybody. My wife hates spreadsheets. I think they're cool. So that's where we've got it. And as you can see here, we have three characters. Uh, and not everything's filled out, which is really exciting. Uh, now, there are a bunch more that I have hidden. And we could talk about that at a later date. But for now, here's what we got. We've got these three characters. We're going to go through and help each player talk a little bit about what they wanted out of this character, what excited them. We'll talk about the stats. There, there are five stats. If you know Monster of the Week, you'll recognize all this except here in Monster of the Week. This is the one like big hack that I had to tackle coming in. Monster of the Week, just like in the TV show Supernatural, if you if you got a book, you can cast some magic, dude. Like, for real. And so there's a basic move that everyone can do called use magic. And I'm like, the only magic in Star Wars is the Force. And I'm not sure a bunch of bounty hunters should be, like, Force-pushing everybody. So I decided to curtail that. So I actually did away with the move at first. But then it felt lacking. And uh, uh, Grand Hoggoth, oh, gosh, goodness. Uh, game designer James Mullen uh, suggested, hey, why not use tech? Because a lot of times with the way you do use magic, you actually build the spell. So there isn't a spell list like you would in D&D. &D. You just say, this is the things I want to do. You pick the stuff you're trying to achieve. You roll for it. And sometimes the GM, the keeper, and everybody. So <laughs> we'll work through that. Uh, then there's some choices for each of the individual playbooks. Some gear choices. Gear. Everybody loves some gear. And I Star Wars up all the gear from that, but it's from a mechanical perspective, pretty much straight from Monster of the Week. Uh, and that's about it. So that was a whole lot of monologuing. I would like to start from the left hand side, heading towards the right. So Jeremiah, first of all, uh, as I, as I, as I, let's see what I'm doing. I'll go back to the regular people. <clears throat> Jeremiah, tell me a little bit about your your engagement with Star Wars and why you chose to play this particular playbook um i'm gonna have to remember sort of yeah so i, I like the idea of, of no 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 start oh. up start up like what's your experience with like oh what do you love about star wars when did you when did you first experience star wars come on like give me the uh, backstory of oh sure, sure. And star wars. so so funny so i'm like almost anybody you can name like somebody introduced them to star wars right like mm -hmm. their dad or their uncle like i i didn't have those people in my life i found it on a lark at a grocery store video rental counter and like i mean i i was i don't know a preteen or an early teen and like i don't i don't remember if just the art appealed to me but i mean i rented it on vhs i didn't know what i was getting into 
Um, <laughs> that's I mean, awesome. I ended up I ended up renting all three movies. Um, I probably don't love Star Wars as, as much as Rich, but uh, I I like pretty much anything sci-fi. So like, you know, I like the I like the space wizards and all the cool. I like the I like the sort of like I, I like the idea of sci-fi that's like it's so super super advanced but it's so super super grungy and dirty yeah um, uh i i think is like i i like that aesthetic of star wars like you know you have all these crazy ships that can you know hyperdrive through space and then you've got people with blaster rifles living in adobe huts kind of stuff mm. like <laughs> um just like this huge gap of i think it's fascinating Awesome. So what is the playbook that you've chosen? Uh, yeah, so I went with the agent. So somebody that previously, you know, worked for some sort of group, you know, some, whether it's mm -hmm. like a military force or security force uh, or something. And I kind of like the idea of, you know, some kind of group that, that kind of maybe did like off the books work or like, mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe used a lot of questionable means. I, I think the touchstone I did, whatever it is, and uh, this will be one of the few Star Trek references I make, but like Sector Twenty Three or Twenty Four, whatever it is from Star Trek, like those those sorts of organizations are fascinating in stories. So like, I'm, I, I liked that idea of of like mm -hmm. a group like that having their hooks in me, and cool. then uh, you and I both did a bit of googling, and you found this very cool like thing that already exists in Star Wars canon called the Katarn Commandos. Yeah, which, uh, Kyle Katarn and his commandos. Yeah, uh, which, which sounded really cool because it, it sounded pretty close to what I was looking for. And then we might just add some non-canon. Like, I still like the idea that maybe there's some squads or something there that are kind of even more off the books, maybe kind of getting yeah. involved with things and by questionable means and for one reason or another, maybe I've decided to, to try to distance myself, but that never okay. works out. So, but you're full on, right? Like you're day to day, you're a bounty hunter, but you're still part of this age. I've still got connections, well. whether that like, and I, I, I sort of see it like, yeah, maybe I can call on them for resources, but like, it's also like, they still have their hooks in me. Like that's not the, not the kind of organization that you just quit. <laughs> but, exactly. You're in the yeah. reserves. <laughs> yeah, whether I want to be or not. <laughs> Cool. And th so Eagle Eyes, our Monster of the Week aficionados, will recognize this as the professional. It's got pretty much all the bells and whistles from the professional. So we have the move deal with your agency. You can ask for help from your old agency, which will be Katarn's Commandos. Now, I uh, see a few playbook moves that you've chosen. Are you liking these or were they just to fill um, it out? You get to choose three to start. Yeah. Like these are the ones I'm, I'm leaning most heavily towards. Uh, I imagine as we kind of all do some brainstorming as we're all making decisions, I might switch some things around. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, I, I think the one for sure I'm absolutely keeping is mobility. Cause like who doesn't uh, love having a, a cool extra vehicle for, for getting awesome. around on land. So that's great because I actually broke this a little bit so that your choices, you didn't have like a whole lot of things. So yeah, that's just, that's just straight up uh, what you'd chosen from before. Yep. Awesome. And then the two you currently have thought about are medic, which yeah. is already really nice because getting fixed between missions can be expensive. You use up that creds. That's kind tactical, of what I was thinking. Yeah. Smart, smart call. Uh, tactical genius. When you read a bad situation, you get to do a stat swap. So yeah. that's cool. Which I'm always a fan of those moves. Like, oh, I get to use my my best stat instead. So yeah. It's like I've got five stats, but I only need one. Exactly. Cool. Uh, you've got here with the agency some choices. Like you get to tell me yeah. a bit more about Kyle, Kyle, uh, Kyle Katarn or Katarn's Commandos. Yeah. I don't even think Kyle's in charge of it anymore, but they still call it Katarn's Commando. Uh, so you've got a couple of resources to choose, right. and then issues. These are just things about the agency that are less than awesome. Obviously, I have uh, to go with dubious motives. Oh, <clears throat> dubious motives is always the best. Absolutely. The best of uh, of issues. 
cool. <laughs> uh, then you got a bit of gear, but it looks like you're really close. Uh, don't forget you've got stat arrays. And yep. so one of the things that I use in this character keeper is I call it a hover over. It's technically a note. You just insert a note. And if you hover over it, things will pop up. Uh, this thing went default. It'll look a little awkward. But you choose one of these arrays of how your stats will be aligned. Yep. And uh, sorry that it actually covers over the stats you're looking at. I wish there That's was fine. a different way to do that. But uh, there you go. So you just got a few choices left to go. Uh, now, I haven't mentioned Drive. We'll talk about that uh, shortly. But I want to go over to Misha. Misha, please tell me about you and Star Wars. What's your engagement? What's your first experience? What do you love about Star Wars? Give me some backstory. Uh, so, like, one of my first memories is actually walking out of Star Wars as a very small, small Misha. Uh, like Star Wars when it was just called Star Wars? Uh, I think it was the second one. I think it was... Oh, okay, cool. Because uh, cool. I am I was born the year before the first one, so I'm not quite old enough to remember the first one in theaters. But You're I definitely remember the, the second, and I just, like, completely remember in. the third. Yeah. That's awesome. Um. Uh, I don't know. I, I just have, my, my mother was a nerd. Uh, recently we found like an old jacket of hers that still had a Frodo Liz button from when she was like my kid's age now. Uh, so yeah, my, my parents were nerds. Uh, they were also military. So that kind of, it, it appealed to us. Uh, uh, so I, I've been, yeah, Star Wars fan since knee high to a grasshopper. Fantastic. And you have made a very bold choice with your character. A couple of really She's blue. I mean, come on. If you if you know anything about me, you know that if there's a blue character, I will play it. Uh, so I, I chose a Chiss because, you know. Uh, but also uh, the kind of the the kind of sinister associations kind of appeal to me a little. Because uh, mm -hmm. most of the Chiss in the Star Wars universe that we've encountered are not necessarily nice people. And yep. or on the side of the good guys uh which you know it's fun to, to like tweak stereotypes like that uh which is another thing i like to do um so she is uh force sensitive uh the character the playbook is the sensitive apparently it's being workshop still i like it it works it makes sense to me it works it, it, it explains what it's about it's about being yeah. force sensitive. <laughs> You get force powers. Remember that whole use magic thing? Yeah. They're all poured into <laughs> you and what you're playing. Uh, but I think she doesn't necessarily acknowledge that that's what it is. Like she gets hunches and and premonition, premonitions and dreams and stuff. Uh, but she hasn't like focused on like trying to lift the the, the thing out of the swamp or anything. Because why would she do that? It's not a thing. Hire a crane. Exactly. That's we have technology people. Sweet. Uh, so the sensitive from Monster of the Week is the spooky, just rekindled. And this was one that will fully developed. I love this playbook. It always surprises me. And the move that you start with uh, at the first is the dark path. Uh, and what it means is that you can give into the dark side to change any role you want to a twelve plus. Avoid all harm from an injury. Just like you get to toggle the win button for a minute. You've pulled on the dark side. How does the hate flow through you is one of the things you as a player will have to describe to us if you choose to for that moment to give it. Now, again, this isn't a... <clears throat> our perception, Will and I, am, and definitely mine, because there's so many redemption arcs in Star Wars. I don't feel like once you go dark side you're always dark side like i don't think you can easily dip into dark side anytime you want this whole gray giant eye thing i don't i don't think makes a whole <laughs> lot of sense but giving into the dark side doesn't mean you immediately are irrevocably like a, a gm player character i don't i don't that's not what this game's about it's about playing with that that dark uh, so yeah you have the dark side to start off with the dark path uh you had said that you were interested in these. You want to talk a little bit about the couple moves you've got chosen here, or, do you, or were there others you were more interested in? Uh, no, I think these are the ones I, I, I ended up deciding on. Uh, so one is there's no such thing as luck. Uh, the force to guide your actions. So you can kind of get a little nudge when you're, when you're trying to do stuff. Uh, yep. You're not, and this one's okay, right? You're not yeah. drawing the dark side. You're just, you know, just, just use a yeah. certain nudge. I'm not, I'm probably, the, the, the character probably isn't even doing it consciously. It's just, you know. Totally. Yeah. 
Uh, and the other one was hunches. Uh, so when something is happening or about to happen uh, somewhere that I'm not, and I can just like, hey, I, I felt I needed to be here for some reason. Uh, and so I am. Cool. And I'm going to let you tell me when you want to trigger that, right? Even in the middle of the scene, if you want to say like, hey, Rich, I think, I think, I think Azur might have a hunch about this, then boom, we'll just jump in. We'll roll those dice. We'll make it happen. That sounds cool. But I'll leave it in your hands to trigger that move unless, unless I think of it, which is not likely. So please <laughs> remind me. Cool. Uh, and then you had some dark side. So there, your powers have an unsavory source, and sometimes you get tempted to do things you shouldn't. So what are the three things that you chose that could trigger fuel your dark side? Uh, I chose self-destruction, fear, and anger. Probably because she tends to jump into things that are not necessarily safe. Uh, so that kind of feeds that self-destruction and then you know oh when you do when you're scared you do stupid things so yeah, again it makes sense uh, and it's same with angry you know it's like okay this is probably when she's more likely to do something she's you she knows she shouldn't but is gonna do anyway mm -hmm. nice oh my goodness do i see gear choices of an electro whip and vibro knives come on Oh Why my. would you not? <laughs> so good. So good. Excellent choices. I am stoked to see Azure. Now, uh, for those Star Wars nerds, um, just have very weird names and they like go by like nicknames that the regular folks can. So we're going with Azure. You mentioned the possibility that Azure was a mispronunciation of your actual short name. What are, yeah. Where are you feeling that? I, I think it's actually probably she introduced herself as her long name. And whoever she was talking to, just like all he caught was Azure, and that's so that's what he started calling her, and and that's what she's been like in in this circle ever since. Like, awesome. if she's like people who know her probably know her her like actual chest name and her like the the shortened version, uh, but she doesn't she doesn't answer to it as much as she answers to Azure anymore. Like she okay. used to answer to it all the time, but now uh, not too many people call her that. Nice. You'll have to privately message me. Yeah, I gotta figure out what it name. is. Too. Yeah, you don't, don't worry about it. You <laughs> privately message me so that I can have someone use it. So it's like that moment, like when I might be at the grocery store and my mom says, Richard James Rogers, you know, then you'll be like, what? Uh, okay, cool. That sounds great. That sounds great. Very excited to see more from Azure the Sensitive. And now we come to the third and final piece of this wonderful puzzle, Magi. Tell me a bit. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Just go to it's just Jay. Let's just let's just Jay. Jay, tell us about <laughs> you. <and Star. laughs> tell me about your Star Wars love, Mad Jay. Where did it come <sighs> from? What do you like about this whole thing? So I uh, I'm old enough to have gone to the drive-in to see uh, A New Hope when it came out. My dad took me. He took the whole family uh, in a 70, 71 Mustang. Uh, so oh, nice. Uh, I remember that's where I, I first saw it. At. Uh, my dad was young, so, um, but I think, uh, as an adult, uh, for me, the excitement, the, the fire comes back for me, uh, the spinoffs like Rogue One, uh, Solo, uh, The Mandalorian, and now The Book of Boba, uh, all these other things that are happening that are not directly on the Skywalker timeline uh, or St uh, Skywalker plot line. Uh, those are all fascinating to me, right? Because uh, these are all these other people doing other things uh, outside of that fight. And that's interesting, interesting to me. Um, and then like Jeremiah said earlier, the fact that a lot of this stuff is uh, high technology, but it's ancient and old. Some of it can't be repaired. We've forgotten how to make some of these things. and. Or yeah, and, and it's all dirty, and I'm like, that's crazy, right? Um, yes, that's fascinating for me. I like that. Fantastic. All right, all right. I'll let you off the hook. Thank you so much for. Uh... I'm still mad about Solo, <laughs> by the way. Just saying. <laughs> so See, I, I liked wait, wait, wait. it. I okay. I like as Solo an too. overall, oh, as an overall movie, I liked it. I am uh -huh. still mad about. Uh, 
uh, a, see a certain character's arc in Solo, and I will never, ever, ever free of Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I know exactly. Yeah, I would yeah, agree with that. I'm with you. I would agree guess who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got enjoyment. Oh, out, oh, uh, sorry. Yes, I'm now with you. And yes, that pissed me off. I'm like, really? <laughs> that's all you can do? That's, right, all, that's all you can do? do? You're super right. confident. Oh, my God. This is the worst. Right. Okay. Great. Yes. So, sorry. Caught up. <laughs> they just got a twin somewhere in the universe. It's a big universe. No, I think uh, the biggest kick I got out of Solo is knowing how we see Han Solo later on in life, right? And then seeing him in that movie, everybody's a step ahead of him, right? He has no idea what's even his girlfriend, right? She's like three or four steps ahead of him, and he doesn't know. He has no idea. Uh, what's happening. Um, and that's funny to me that he is that naive, that ignorant about what the score is. Yeah. I like, I did like that, that arc of, you know, you can see like that naive, shiny, trusting right. soul and seeing how he ended up in new hope. It's like, sure. you can kind of feel what has happened to him and like right. how that just yeah. ground down on him. Yes, yes. So, so to me, Solo was all Donald Glover all the time. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, God. Every time he walked on screen, I was, like, I was in love. Oh. Where's our Lando yeah. movie? Where's Lando, Lando movie, baby? Yes, or Lando series? Lando I don't TV want show, to find okay? him. Yeah. Get him on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right, all right. H holy <laughs> agree, holy agree. Mad J, tell us about your character before we go into like the Star Wars show. Sure, 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 sure. So I like the wrong. Um, I had three. And then as I'm watching us make decisions, we're having conversations. And I got down to the wrong. I like the idea of playing someone uh, who was done wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to make a bunch of bad physical decisions uh, out of anger and being wrong. Uh, and then have to clean up a bunch of stuff and, and kind of make stuff right uh, as I stumble through this game. So I thought this nice. playbook was perfect for that. Now, in the development, this is straight up the wronged from Monster of the Week. However, as I looked at it, so the wronged in Monster of the Week, you choose a type of monster that wronged you. Maybe they killed your whole family, that kind of thing. It could be vampires, it could be werewolves. This is Star Wars. I didn't really want to get into like speciesism of like, I hunt down all the Wookiees. That seemed a little problematic to me maybe a lot problematic. So the tweak to the wronged that uh, I made is it's an organization that you do wrong, right? Now, do you have right. any inklings along those lines, Matt J? I do. So uh, I immediately wanted to play an ex stormtrooper. Um, and so I think... Um, Thank you, Finn, for for like giving us that that permission, right? I know it existed before, <laughs> but Finn was so awesome. Yes, so I want to play. Yes, I want to. And so even here, I'm like, uh, we've seen Finn. I either want to play an older ex stormtrooper, right? Not a young person, uh, an old, maybe someone who's late thirties, early forties, old, right? Maybe mm -hmm. that's why he was wrong, right? Or I want to play. A uh, female stormtrooper, right? Ex stormtrooper, um, and and see where that goes, right? Um, so I think directly it is the squad that did them wrong. But I think uh, as the game opens, I don't know directly who did it. All I know is we went to do some stormtrooper stuff. Uh, everyone gets off the ship. We go do the things. I come back. The ship is gone. Nobody's around. It's just me in a bad place because this isn't a friendly place where they left me. Nasty. Nasty. And, and that's me saying, I'll let the GM work out the rest. Oh, that's good. I have, I have ideas already, already brewing. Love it. Now, uh, how long ago was this, that this happened to the stormtrooper? But I want to say at least a year, right? Because that gives me at least a year bounty hunting, right? Um, okay. I'm I could be happy longer, um, but I don't think it's yeah. I don't think it's anything shorter than that. Cool. Um, so at the risk of getting deep into canon, which we're not, mm -hmm. that's not my intent with this question. 
the time period for this game, just so it kind of runs along with what people who are watching Star Wars right now might be thinking about. I'm thinking it's like Mandalorian time frame. So that's that's five years after return. Right. But we've already seen there's definitely Imperial remnants. Right. So if you're thinking it's been a year, then do you think that your character was probably part of an Imperial remnant? You were just raised up in it. And are you cool with that? Like pre yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Post Palpatine that. kind of still yes. doing yeah, your thing. I'm cool with that. Yeah, right. I'm good with that. All right. Yeah. Rock on. Rock on. Uh I think uh I haven't made a bunch of selections, but I think I probably still have my armor, but I may have removed all the insignia from it. But I think if, if you've seen it, right, you that's stormtrooper armor, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's got the insignias on it or not, right? It's, it's iconic. Well, you want to keep that stormtrooper armor because it's just so effective against yeah. stones, yeah. blasters, yes. logs. Just very effective. It's an incredibly protective armor. It's a good choice. I mean, I was going to ask, like, do you even want to bother getting ranged weapons for your character? Because <laughs> sorry, Misha. I broke <laughs> oh man, he had to do that right when he's taking the step. It's fine. <laughs> They got rid of me. I was too good, and they were getting jealous, and so they left. Obviously, me. Mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. what happened. I was making oh, somebody look bad. I, I hope the dice agree with your confidence. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Everybody, I love how you're everybody saying said, that you know, thirty or forty was old though. That was just like a dagger. <laughs> of, I saw your reaction. Like children, man. That's old for a stormtrooper, probably. Yeah, that's old for a stormtrooper. Yeah. Well, clearly, because I mean, they get taken out by rocks and teddy bears. <laughs> All right. So you guys have some choices to make. Uh, again, you have your stat array. It looks like uh, Raksu, the agent, already has some stats there. It looks like, yeah. So you got some choices there on the stats. Uh, I did go ahead and pre-fill the tough at plus two, because if you can see here for the wronged, all, no matter what you choose, you're going to have a plus two in, in tough. And don't forget, we've got that uh, word doc. If you if you're like, I'd rather look at another screen. Feel free. <laughs> As you all are making some choices about moves, uh, if it looks like most everybody is close, we're going to be doing history in just a minute. But one okay. thing I wanted to talk about here is one of the things I'm, I didn't exist in Bounty of the Week until I played a game called Neon City Overdrive. Not a Power by the Apocalypse game. That's that's the core engine of Monster of the Week that I also use in Bounty of the Week. Uh, Neon City Out overdrives this game that I ran uh, that I'd never run before. It's from uh, a, a developer who I'm going to look up so that I don't mess up who they are, but it's a cyberpunk-style game. uses pools of D6s. And in the game, you create a drive. And the drive is... What you, you're cyberpunk, you're kind of a shadow run type person, you're doing jobs. The drive is what your goal is like, I'm doing this to get a sweet car or to get out of this city or to get up into the orbitals, whatever, right? It's, it's your end state. And I thought that was really interesting because a lot of times, look, we didn't know what Mandalorian, what. What Mando, what Jinjarin, spoilers, wanted, he just did this thing. Now, I would probably have said in early episodes, his goal, his drive is to help his culvert do better. He was taking tons and tons of jobs and throwing all his money to his fellow Mandalorians, which is awesome. But uh, this allows you guys to each talk about where... Even if if we only play a few sessions, like where would movie four of your character's story be, or what's the end goal for uh, your character? And I've seen every like I've been able to play this uh, about a dozen times since we stuck in the drives, and and Will's running it a few times as well. I've seen some really cool drives from clear my sister's name to uh, open my own bar, to write a, a Rhodian opera about my life, uh, actual 
thing. Peril Planet is the developer of Neon City Overdrive. The author's Nathan Russell. So there we go. Whew. I effectively looked that up. Uh, but as you guys play the game, you get rewarded in creds. And you can spend creds in, in, in between hunts and the like to say, oh, yeah, well, I'm spending some time and money uh, to pursue this drive. And then at the end of our series... The, near the end, like last session, we're going to have each of you make what's called a retirement roll. And that's where we get to have a, a mechanized epilogue. And there's a bit of risk to it, right? If you haven't been paying into this drive track, <laughs> you're going to be rolling with minuses, which means that cool thing you wanted may, may end up cost you way more than you ever intended. So it, it gives us a cool little bit of uh, development and some mechanics around what is it that you're doing this crazy job? Look, like, who chooses to be a bounty hunter? This right, is a right. very complicated profession. Uh, so, so there's there's the drive. Uh, we are sitting 40 minutes in, and I was really hoping before we take our break, we could have characters <laughs> done to the point where we could at least do history. Who needs a little bit more time? Uh, I, think, I think I'm good. I just filled in my stats. Uh, I'm going to go with my first two gut choices for my moves. Look at all those zeros, man. Wow. <laughs> what? What do you mean? That, no, it's a totally two. legit stat array. It's just... You're not bad at anything. <laughs> cool. That's interesting. I'm not, That's why uh, I got rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> You get a plus one ongoing and investigating, pursuing the enemy that caused your loss. So I'm going to make that broad, right? Anything Imperial, you're going to get a plus one ongoing whenever you're investigating something. Imperial. Nice. I like it. Uh, Berserk, no matter, how, no matter how much harm you take, you always keep going till the fight's over. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't use any of my harm moves on you, and you cannot die. When the fight ends, all harm takes effect as normal. <laughs> That's awesome. See where I'm going, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then what doesn't kill me? If you suffered harm in a fight, you gain plus one on going to the fight. I said, oh my goodness. So now it's, it's a thing like <laughs> the one stormtrooper <laughs> that could aim, they kicked him out. <laughs> Yun Soretti is a very cool name. I, of course, Magic, if you could at some point figure out what your character's designation was, like, you know, E e THX 411 or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh -huh. Let me know so that I can do the same thing that I'm eventually going to do to Misha's character and use that full-on name. I'd appreciate it. Uh, it's yeah, so, the name, by the way. Oh, oh, oh. You are awesome. Thank you for doing that. Oh, wow. That is amazing. That is really Yes, long. I saw that. <laughs> it's a chiss name. <laughs> they look it's like. perfect. It's the best chiss name I've seen all day. Uh, but one of the things that I see here, right? You're telling me you want fights with a lot of damage and you want Yoon to be the focal point of taking a whole lot of hits, right? That's that's where we're at. Uh well yeah, because when I look at, yeah. when yes, well, when I look at Raksu and Azur, right? Uh they don't I, I don't want to step on their uh highlighted stats. Right, mm -hmm. and and I'm kind of glad they are where they are, right? But I'm actually putting the blame on them. I'm trying to make sure that they don't get hurt. So, um, oh, you know, sweet. I kind of right. He's and mad, I'll, right? And I'll he's be there mad. to patch you up. Yeah. See, no, Yuna's cool. mad. He's he's pissed off. His world's different, right? He can't do and be what he used to be and do. And so uh, there's going to be a lot of pain to go around until he figures out what he's going to do next. That sounds awesome. Uh, cool. So, um, talking about gear, looks like you chose for Raksu, Jeremiah, uh, uh, hidden armor, flak vest. I just for because you're near harm, I do stick a little thing here to help everybody keep track and remember they have armor. I don't think Azur has the option to get. I do not have armor. I don't don't. Believe. You just run around in your cool golf clothes. And we have uh, protective wear suited to your look worth one armor, and I mark that for you as well. Sweet. So, yeah, we've got practical signature. And yes, I did put a lightsaber in for the wronged. And yes, I did not put a lightsaber in for the sensitive. It's fine. 
good stuff. Cool. Maybe, let's maybe work through some. Let's work through some histories. Uh, mm-hmm. Who would like to go first to list out? <clears throat> I'd at least like to get one history to every like you. Each one player has one history with at least one other player. If we end up doing two without it seeming too complicated, that sounds great to me. Okay. Uh, I've first. already I've already picked out one that that jumped out to me uh, for my history. One of my history questions. All right, what is it's, it? Uh, uh, well, let me. Nope, I've got too many screens now. Um, uh, Yun Soretti is on the Guild House's watch list, and I've been keeping an eye on him. Nice. Uh, I think that's <laughs> just because the Guild is smart enough to know any kind of Imperial ties is probably dangerous, and if they come looking. Even if it's even if even if Yun's been working for a year, like that's still that's still dangerous. I like it. Sweet, and we'll just rename that the agency. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not for you. That's me. That that's the thing I'm gonna fix. Oh, okay. I I, I wondered about that because sometimes I saw references to guild houses, but I didn't know if that was like the bounty guild or or something else i wasn't sure it says guild house for for the agency uh, the okay. agent i need to be tweaking that over to make gotcha. it clearer that it's about okay. the agency sweet uh so misha or mad jade either of you have a history you'd like to offer up to another player i'm ready go for okay. it uh i think for azure uh azure uh I think you saw Jan absolutely lose it and go berserk. Tell us what the situation was and how much collateral damage I caused. Is that how that goes, Rich? Which one? Let me see it. Well, I tell them what the situation is, and then they tell me how much the collateral damage Exactly. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, so I think, I think it's a place where, uh, Azure would have felt comfortable, um, um, or at least, you know, reasonably comfortable, right? Um, some other Imperials or, uh, remnants of Imperials were in there. Uh, I followed them in, uh, I wanted to have a conversation. They didn't want to have a conversation. A fight broke out. Um, it was hands. It went from hands uh to blasters and then i broke out a lightsaber and and then i don't know how much damage was done after that i think that's where azura tells me how much damage i did to this place uh where is this place like let's let's define it i is this a cantina is this uh an open market a bazaar is it a museum uh, this feels like not qu- like it does. It a uh, bazaar feels too too open, right? Uh, so probably like uh like a back room of a cantina, okay. Uh, as opposed to the entire cantina, and let's just say they don't use that room anymore. Uh, because there's some schmears that they never quite like, and some stains that, yeah, um, yeah. Is that on the station where our game's set, or was it somewhere else? Uh, I think it was somewhere else. Okay. Because we, we want to be able to show our faces here again. Oh, so. that might be true. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he Kylo ran the back room of a cantina. Yeah where, yeah. where I have to set a future hunt. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> nice. I like it. Azure, how did that how did that affect number one, you seeing this wanton violence, and two, your opinion of of Yoon? So I think it actually ties into one of the histories I was gonna pick. Uh which is uh they saw me give into the dark side, uh ask them who the victim was and tell them let me see. Probably because, uh, oh, come on, work with me here. Okay, 
okay, fine, be that way. Uh, what is it? There you go. Yeah, ask them who the victim was and then tell them what you did. I think you probably freaked me out, and so I got scared, and that triggered me using the dark side. Uh, and and so I was part of the destruction, but we're not really sure who did what parts of the destruction. Nice. Oh, man. So we just agreed to not talk about it too much. After yeah, we don't talk yep. about it. <laughs> we don't talk about Budapest. <laughs> is that Katana? Is, is that so? It sounds like it's more than the back room now. Like maybe it's just the back room with Yoon, but maybe with Yoon and Zur, maybe it's more like that place was shut down for a while. Oh, they had to do definitely do some like deep cleaning of the rest of it, but the, that room they don't use anymore. Okay. That room may not exist anymore. I'm not sure. That's now a back porch with, like, you know, That's it's right, not enclosed anymore. <laughs> but it's still got a bit of a roof over it, so, you know. Azur and Yun definitely have some interesting history. I'd like to figure <laughs> out some kind of Raksu Azur connection. Yeah, here. so um, I was thinking for uh, Raksu. Um, an old river rivalry has turned into a tight friendship. Uh, tell them what we what we once fought over. Uh, I'm trying to decide what that thing we fought over was. Uh, Before you define it, I haven't decided to take this yet, but just let me tell you how funny it is because I was one of my options that I was considering choosing <laughs> for Azure is that our relationship has romantic potential, but it hasn't gone further yet. It could totally have romantic potential. <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> right. uh, I don't know if that's the way I'm going, but that makes it even more juicy. That I, I'm all for that. So yeah. Uh me oh. Okay, so the 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 reason I think Azure took up bounty hunting in the first place is uh her, her fiance like skipped town and technically she's supposed to be looking for him. Uh but if she looks for him too hard she might find him and then she has to go back home and she doesn't really want to do that. So maybe you had a lead that was a really good lead and she didn't want that lead found and followed up on. So that's what she was fighting you over. Ah, interesting. Were you, were you like purposely like, uh, oh, there's a word that I can't think of on the tip of my tongue, but like purposely like, like sabotaging my investigation or anything or just like, getting in my way or it's more uh kind of it's not quite as bad as sabotage like she's not gonna break anything but sure. she's definitely oh, gonna like ask for the information first and then black hole it from whoever and pay <laughs> them to not tell anybody else nice nice that's pretty good that's pretty good and i do like this uh, hunting for fiance, but not really. That is juicy. I'm definitely going to be making some use out of that. <laughs> but you got to like... come up with a name for him because I can only yeah. come up with one just name for me. <laughs> only one per day. Okay. <laughs> Challenge accepted. And I feel like now that I, I have to go with that decision because that makes it even juicier is that there's a fiance in the mix somewhere. So I'm just going to. There we go. That is fantastic. I'm gonna put that in there. I think that's good. There. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw we both checked. We were okay with. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So. Oh, and what they're talking about is we do have a, a section of this, and I, I don't want to call anything out, but we're mindful of it. We have a safety tab on the character keeper where everybody has the option to anonymously check things they want to line on. That means they're not interested in uh, that content like sexual assault. We have a line on sexual assault. We have veils. Veils are things that we're okay if it exists in the world, but we're going to 
we won't shine a spotlight on it, right? It'll be a quick cutaway or a screen wipe in the in the Lucas style of, of Star Wars and the like. And then we have ask first, which means before you drop this on our laps, please check in with the group before you you say it. Like I'm thinking it might be midichlorians. And if everybody's like, yeah, sure, that's cool. That's awesome. We'll talk about your midichlorian count. That's fine. Uh, that doesn't bother any of us. It does bother some people who who love Star Wars, just don't love that. And so you I can just line it, Jay. You can just go in there. <laughs> you can. You can line it. It's totally cool. <clears throat> as well as that, we also have X card. But the thing that they're referring to is there's even romance options in that little tab. It's really fun. That way you can indicate ahead of time. I'm interested in romance with characters, non-player characters, that kind of thing. So that people don't feel like they're stepping on toes by dipping into that potential storyline doesn't mean hey you've got to be interested in x or y it just means you're open to it that's all uh cool we've got our histories worked out everybody has gear chosen i think we are ready to do our last step we didn't talk about the yeah. last, uh, ah let's do second. that yeah <laughs> oh yeah sorry 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 uh so this one's raxu uh he's helped me at a critical point in my quest for revenge. Uh, I needed help finding a high ranking uh, Imperial, former Imperial person uh, who might be in hiding. Nice. And I, I can imagine my, my agency connection would help with that because they're, they have, they have ties from, from the new Republic. So. Mm -hmm. And are you and thinking that this is somebody you've already, like the two of you guys went and hunted down? No, I think I, I think I know where they are right now, right? And I haven't figured out what I'm going to do next. Um, and so I'll just leave that out there. I don't. I think it's open, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I think they gave me an answer, right? And but I haven't that that's still out there. Um, but my thought is that is also possibly how I'm on the keep eye on this guy with uh, Raxu and his agency, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're keeping an eye on some high-ranking Imperial. Yes. That, that plays or, you right know, into my hands. Right. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Perfect. Delightful. <laughs> Very excited because, to hear this. Cause, it's like you cause read ahead then, in the book. Yes. We like giving you tidbits. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Perfect. So now, you guys ready to talk about your ship before we take our mid-game break? Sure. I'm ready. Yeah. Sweet. Good, sweet, sweet ship. So, you guys have a cool ship. Colored by my buddy, uh, Alex Prinz, who's an amazing artist. Uh, if you've ever seen my uh, Twitter icon, he did it. He's great. I, I have this. I love deck plans. I know it's super yeah. nerdy. <laughs> but I love deck plans. <laughs> they made me excited. By doing by doing the Stringer Bell deck plans, I realized there are only um, two uh, officer level quarters, and there are three of them. So that's fun. That's going to be a fun conversation that we'll have eventually. But that's that's for probably next session. So um, you have some choices to make when you create your thing. Each player chooses a single option from upgrades and flaws. We're going to keep going until there are a total of two upgrades and three flaws. You can take an additional upgrade for an additional flaw. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with Mad J, and uh, then we're going to we're going to basically go Mad J, Misha, Jeremiah, Mad J, Misha, Mir Jeremiah. So you could choose a, a a flaw or an upgrade. My brain may say merit because. I'm going to be playing Vampire Fifth Ed soon, but I mean <laughs> upgrade. So choose a flaw or an upgrade, your choice. You have to have three flaws, two upgrades at the end. All right. And uh, if you're if you're like, oh, I you know you can you can click the. There you go. What these are? They're tags. They're tags that I can bring into the fiction if we have ship-to-ship -ship combat. That's really what's going on. Or it could be problems you have on the ship as you're on a mission. Could be. All right. Upgrades can uh, give you binnies. Uh, I'm going with a flaw. 
what you want. Financed, of course. Financed. So you guys don't own this shit. Uh-oh. Yeah, no. It's, it's uh, making uh, payments. <laughs> Brent to own. <laughs> Aaron's hot. So we're going to be making payments forever. The string of bell. <laughs> Least the string of the bell today. Awesome. So go ahead and, and grab that financed and we'll keep moving along. Misha, what are you interested in? Upgrade or a flaw? Uh, I will choose cramped as a flaw because, I mean, clearly there's only two nice. officer cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> We're a little in close quarters. <laughs> Cool. Now, you know, we do have deck plans. Mm -hmm. So do you think that there are just certain amount of rooms that have a bunch of crap in them or there's there's some kind of problem that's caused you guys to feel a little cramped? Uh, What do you think there? I think maybe uh, some of the boosts from the upgrades have like kind of encroached into some of the space. Mm. I like that. Cool. Jeremiah, do you want to... Take the last flaw, or do you want to take an upgrade? Uh, I, I feel like I'll go ahead and choose an, an upgrade. These all are cool. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with stealth. Nice. So she's a quiet really? craft. She can stringer bell can we sneak can, around. We can sneak through space, which is definitely a thing. Mm, that'll pay off. Mad J. Uh. I'll be going upgrade, uh, weaponry, weapons. Nice. Nice. Sounds good. You know. Yeah, she she start, she comes with some turbo lasers, right? What are you thinking uh, that you have? There's the possibility if you wanted, like, a mind dispenser. Uh, we could go with, we'll make it up on the fly, <laughs> which is totally fine with me. Uh, but we definitely are going to have a turret of some kind, right? So that we can. All right, I was going to say, if are the yeah, if the lasers are fixed forward, then maybe we have a turret. Yeah, Ooh, turret yeah. sounds awesome. Let's do yeah. that. Sweet, uh, Misha, you're up. What you want? I'm going to go unreliable. Oh, like she she's finicky. You got to You got to You got to <laughs> You know, if you're mean to her, she's going to be mean to you. Uh, so uh, let's let's not do that. Love it. Love it. And I get you guys one more upgrade if you want. No, that was three. No, that was, that was, that oh, was that was three. the third one? Oh, yeah, sorry. You, you started like one below. I did. I did. Sorry <laughs> about that. We'll just... But we could if we wanted Sweet. to. Are you guys happy with your uh, upgrades and flaws? It, it's yeah. not set in stone. We could have a conversation between sure. now and the next session. If somebody says, yeah, I really wanted X or Y, that's totally cool. And you also can spend creds to get more upgrades or get rid of flaws. Mm-hmm. It's totally cool. It's your creds. You spend it how you want. All right. Yeah, I'm happy for now. Yeah. I think yeah, no, I like for it. look, do we want sleek and do. scarred? I like that. Nice. I'm good with that. Matches the art pretty well. Yeah, Yeah, it does. She does look sleek and scarred. And yes, in uh, Arabesh, that does say Stringer Bell. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) I just want to point it out because I got excited that Alex did that for me. Thank you, Alex. Cool. All right. We have approval from an eight year old. Uh, Perfect. On Perfect. This, the ship is cool. So big ups. Awesome. Perfect. We have finished up our bounty hunter creation. We've got everything set out from a gear, stats, all that good stuff. Don't have drives yet. We're going to do like a, a jump in scene and, and I'll give you guys a chance to marinate. I do think it's important for us to have drives uh, because that's where you spend your your downtime is, is probably doctoring that. We've done our stringer bell, so I think it's time to take a break, friends. I'm going to stop sharing screens. We are going to take like almost 10 minutes, eight and a half. Uh, so I, I've got a little movie because it's eight and a half minutes long. That's why we're taking eight minutes. like eight to 10 minutes. 
Take a break. We'll see you guys in a bit. Thank <laughs> you.